This slide shows a seminiferous tubule, and we can see if we look at its outer boundary, we can see that it's lined by these uh, long, flattened cells with these elongated nuclei. These are paratubular contractile cells, also known as myoid cells, and they're going to help produce peristaltic contractions that are going to bring the developing spermatozoa into the duct system into the, uh, of the male re reproductive tract. And we can see many cell types that are found that are lining the seminiferous tubule. And in terms of developing sperm from stem cells that are found along the basement membrane to these de uh, developing spermatozoa, it takes approximately 74 days. So all this, although this is, this is called seminiferous epithelium, there's one true cell type of the seminiferous tubule because it's non-replicating and it doesn't divide and it's always there. And that is this cell called the Sertoli cell. And it has this long ovoid nuclei as a, a prominent nucleolus. And it's actually found bound in all cases from the basement membrane. And it provides a place of nourishment for all these cells that are developing. And another name for these cells is sustentacular cells or nurse cells. And they're going to secrete two things. The first is testicular fluid, which is going to help nourish the developing spermatozoa, as well as androgen binding protein, which is going to grab testosterone and keep it in the luminal compartment so it further nourishes the developing spermatozoa and helps them develop further functionality. And most importantly, the Sertoli cell also forms the blood testes barrier. So if we look at two adjacent Sertoli cells located over here, we actually can sort of see that they have these cytoplasmic extensions coming off of them. And they meet up here and they are adhered together by tight junctions. And what this does is, is it forms two compartments. It, can forms, it forms a, a basement or basal compartment which isolates stem cells from other cells that are found in this luminal compartment. And this is important because the stem cells are gen genetically identical to the individual's uh, genetic makeup. The chromosomes are, are identical. However, the cells that are found in the luminal compartment have all gone, undergone meiosis and crossing over, so they're actually genetically distinct. So the individual's immune system can actually attack these cells that are found in the luminal compartment because they're considered foreign. And what the blood testes barrier does is isolates um, the, the stem cells from these uh, cells with genetically distinct makeup so they're not attacked by the individual's immune system. So if we look at the developing cells, we can start down here with these stem cells that are called spermatogonia. So there's a type B spermatogonia in which all the, the cells that are found in, in the luminal compartment are derived from. So this type B spermatogonia is going to become a primary spermatocyte and it has cord-like chromosomes, cr cord-like chromosome appearance and it's, it's undergoing meiosis 1 and then it's going to quickly undergo meiosis 2 and it occurs so fast that it's never actually seen in histological sections. So the secondary spermatocyte that has gone through meiosis II becomes an early spermatid. And we can see that it has this round nucleus, it has a homogeneous dark appearance, and it actually has a fair amount of cytoplasm with it. And if we look at a late spermatid, it has the typical appearance of sort of what we would expect to see from a sperm, or spermatozoa, it has this elongated nuclei, and there's actually two late, two late spermatids uh, found here, and it actually sheds this excess, nu excess cytoplasm that it had from when it was an early spermatid, and it, we can see that lining the lumen of this seminiferous tubule, and it's known as a residual body. So these will be actually be phagocytosed further in the male reproductive tract. So these are the general features of the epithelium that are found in the seminiferous tubule. And we'll look at some of the interstitial cells that are responsible for secreting testosterone. This is another section of a seminiferous uh, tubule um, from a testy that's been stained with H&E. And instead of looking at the seminiferous tubules, we're actually going to focus on the space that's in between them. 
So if we zoom in, we can see a specific cell type. This is a cell known as a Leydig cell, also known as an interstitial cell because it's found in this interstitial space between the seminiferous tubules. And we can see it has an eosinophilic sort of staining of the cytoplasm, and it has a sort of a faint staining cytoplasm as well. And this is due to its substantial smooth endoplasmic reticulum, um, which is associated with steroid producing cells. So the Leydig cell produces testosterone, and we can see that the cells are actually close to blood supply. So we can see a capillary here and another blood vessel here. So it has the possibility of sending testosterone uh, through, the through the body for development of secondary sex characteristics during development and puberty, as well as the, the testosterone can be sent across into the seminiferous tubules where it can be bound by that and androgen binding protein that is secreted by the Sertoli cells for further de development and maturation of developing spermatozoa. And in some cases, we see the Leydig cells have this lipofusion pigment, which is indicative of a protein product, but it's another feature that is typically found in Leydig cells. So when you look at seminiferous tubules, don't forget about the important cell types that are found within the interstitial, interstitial space, that's our Leydig cell.